am from Houston, Texas, born and raised. A hey, H Town, hold it down. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another White Coat Chat with Hey Dr. Helene. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Over the last month, I have gained over 650 subscribers. Like what? I am just super excited about it. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel and to my old and faithful subscribers. Shout out to y'all too for just being here and being patient with me. And so because of that jump, I am making this about me video just so that my new subscribers can learn a little bit about me as well as if my old subscribers, you know, maybe refresh some things, I guess, per se. With that being said, we're gonna do this video with some wine. So, we're going to be drinking Stella Rosa Rosé. Don't say nothing. I don't want to hear y'all opinions. I don't care. Oh. Alrighty. So, if you have some wine at home or if you have some type of beverage, feel free to pause this video, go get you something to drink, and come back because we are going to be having a little quarantine happy hour and about me. These are questions that... I asked you guys to send me via Instagram, my email, or on my YouTube. This video, I wanted it to be like 10 minutes long, but with the number of questions that I got, I don't know if that's possible. Honestly, I wanna get through all of the questions that y'all sent me. Like, I want to like be respectful in that way. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how long this video goes, okay? Don't be mad. So cheers. Let's go ahead and get this started. Where are you from? I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. What's your ethnicity? I am half Nigerian on my dad's side and my mom is from Louisiana. How old are you? I am 25. Wow, that's wild. I feel like I was just 21. I'm 25. <laughs> Do you speak other languages? So English is my native language. However, I've taken years of Spanish classes and I can understand Spanish and I can speak it as well but not to the point of saying that I'm fluent. But I do want to be fluent in Spanish. How tall are you? I am a whopping five feet, eight inches. So you know, guys, <laughs> if y'all are like six feet, cause you know your girl wears heels, so, you know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> are you into fitness? If you follow me on Instagram or you know me in person, you know that I, love fitness i work out at least five times a week usually six on average and the kind of workouts i like to do are hit workouts so high intensity interval training i like agility workouts cross training however i do like to go hiking i do like to go running when it's not spring with pollen um but yes i am very into fitness <laughs> do you plan to have children if so how has your choice to pursue medicine affected your outlook on future motherhood Yes, I do plan to have children. My decision to become a doctor didn't really have to do with my decision to become a mother. Being a physician is obviously gonna be difficult and it's gonna, you know, there's gonna be some trying times, but there are a lot of physician moms who are out there killing it. There are physician moms in every kind of aspect of medicine. So I don't think that will be a problem. And being 25 years old, I have like years before I need to like start having kids. Um, so I'm just following God's plan for my life and I think it will turn out just fine. Have you ever experienced someone trying to discredit or diminish your accomplishments? Whether your goal of being admitted to med school, while in med school, or in rotation. You know you are a boss babe. <laughs> if so, how did you handle the situation? It kind of reminds me a lot of the time when uh, school counselors in college would discredit a lot of physicians to be of color. Oh, you're not gonna be a doctor. You can't You can't make it into med school. And then we prove them wrong anyway. So I think things like that will happen. But personally in undergrad, I never experienced that from a counselor. I never met with someone to set up my schedule all throughout undergrad, except for the very first semester. All of my professors have been supportive in my goals and like helping me and wanting to write letters of recommendation for me. Um, in med school, obviously I'm at an HBCU medical school, so I get super, supported here because um, they want us to succeed. So I can't really think of a time where my dreams were like discredited from someone. 
Um, but if they were, truly I wouldn't let it affect my dream because I know that God put this calling into my heart to pursue and nobody is about to get in the way of that, period. So there's always a way to handle that situation and really just to be resilient and show perseverance. How does medical school work? So long story short, you go into medical school, your first two years in med school, you're basically learning the exact same thing as the rest of your classmates. Genetics, the biochemistry, the pathology, the pharmacology, etc. During third year, you do rotations where you're actually in the hospital, and then fourth year is when you branch off, do rotations that you're interested in, and then apply to residency. Have you ever permed your own hair? Um, no, I have not, but when I was younger, my mom would for me. <laughs> Do you meal prep? Yes, I do. Um, actually, yesterday I meal prepped. I made a shrimp and rice soup. Yeah, and it is fantastic. Like, I can't wait to eat that today. Um, what do you like to do in your free time slash relief stress? So in my free time, I definitely like to hang out with friends. I like to work out, obviously. Eat. I am definitely an eater. I like to drink. You know. Happy hour is great, brunch is fantastic. I like to try new things. So like before this coronavirus and everything hit, I wanted to like go ax throwing, I wanted to go to the gun range, um, you know, do things that I haven't done before um, and that interests me. Like I would love to go skydiving, all that kind of stuff. So I just love being like adventurous in that kind of way. Um, and then also I do like, like to do a little light reading, but like super light. Oh, and definitely to relieve stress, I like going to the spa. I went to the spa for the first time like a few months ago. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend y'all need to go to the spa like for real. How did you manage stress in school? So basically similar to what I said for the last question, um, but I would also say that I took breaks. So I'm the kind of person that I like to study for long periods of time. Like if I have a free Saturday, I'll just study for the entire Saturday. But I'll make sure to take breaks every hour or every two hours and just do something that's completely unrelated to studying. So I'll go out to eat with a friend or I'll go to the park or I'll go work out. Um, but definitely like managing stress in school, um, those are things that I did. And I also would talk to my classmates and talk to people who I'm friends with outside of medicine um, and just kind of vent in that way as well. What inspired you to pursue medicine? So, if you have not watched my very first YouTube video, um, if I know how, I'll link it up here somewhere. Um, and in that video, I explain exactly why I wanted to pursue medicine. What made you become a doctor and not another health professional like nursing, PA, etc.? So, I chose to become a doctor because I wanted to be that person in charge. I wanted to be the person that was at the head of the patient team. I wanted to be the physician who is an expert in their field. I knew that the schooling was obviously longer taking this route, um, but to really know the medicine behind everything you're doing, making medical decisions that put the patient's best interest first, um, I wanted to do all of that. And honestly, I have always had that kind of like leader personality. And so I would not have been happy being a nurse. I would not have been happy being a PA, NP, working under people. I wasn't about that. How has your faith in Christ helped you through this journey in medicine? I love this question. Um, basically, my faith in Christ. So background, um, I also have a YouTube video where I show when I was baptized. So definitely take a look at that video as well. And um, basically, I, you know, God was kind of always in my life. Like I grew up going to church, but I wasn't like a true disciple at that point in my life. Um, however, God did guide all of my steps. Like he guided me to mission trips abroad. He guided me to even want to pursue medicine in the first place. But definitely like through this journey, like this is an arduous journey. This journey is tough. There's so many ups and downs. There's so many like, where you think you're going in a straight line, but it goes this way. There's a lot in this journey. And so my faith has allowed me to be content at whatever place I'm at. My faith has allowed me to know that there's something greater than all of this. My faith has allowed me to recognize that as a doctor, I'm not the one saving my patients' lives. It's truly up to the true healer, which is God. 
And that's something that I can take solace in and I can just take comfort in knowing that he's ruling everything that's going on in my life and it's working out for my good. And so my faith has played a huge part in this medical journey in general. And I'll definitely make another white coat chat about that question. I definitely told someone I was gonna be making a separate video, which I will be. I would love to hear a bit about how you got into medical school. I'm pretty sure I have a YouTube video about this as well, but in essence, I went to Baylor. I graduated in three and a half years, held some leadership positions in medical honor societies at Baylor. I also um, was a community service chair for Blue Bonnet Hospice, in which I um, helped to coordinate volunteer opportunities with college students that were pre-med and um, nursing homes around the city of Waco. I worked with at-risk youth as well um, through a after-school church program. Um, I think I had like a three point, like six or seven overall GPA and a 3.2 or 3.1 science GPA. My MCAT sucked. I ended up working as a scribe after I graduated college. And I basically still applied to med school and it ended up working out, so yeah. When did you take your MCAT? So I took my MCAT in the summer of my junior year in college. How did you study for it slash study better for it? So I did the self-taught like Princeton review books and just kind of studied on my own, which I would not recommend. At that time, I needed some kind of guidance with those questions and I wish I would have taken like a formal class. Truly, I don't like giving MCAT advice because I didn't perform well on the MCAT, so I can't be telling people what to do. But I will say what I wish I would have done was done more practice questions. I did not study for that correctly at all. I did not know how to take that test. I did not know how to understand the questions and what they were asking of me. Yeah, mm -mm. The one thing I would say, do practice questions. What did you do for clinical experience in college? Um, so I kind of touched on that already, um, but additionally clinical experience, I did a lot of shadowing. I shadowed pediatrician, family medicine physician, and a psychiatrist. And I also went on a medical mission trip to Ghana in college. What were your extracurriculars in undergrad? So my extracurriculars were, so outside of like volunteering and stuff, because I already talked about that, stuff I did for fun, like I played volleyball, um, worked out <laughs> as well, yeah. I don't really know how to answer that question. I'm sorry. Did you retake any of your pre-med classes? No, I did not. What jobs were you able to obtain with your undergraduate degree? So I don't really understand that question because like I graduated with a bachelor's of arts in psychology and then I went straight to med school, um, like outside of scribing. Basically, when you go to med school, your undergraduate degree is basically useless. Like you only need it to get into medical school, truly. Did undergrad at Baylor prepare you for medical school in terms of study routine and discipline? So I'm gonna say yes and no. Baylor, I think, was great in preparing me for med school in the sense of work ethic. Um, Baylor is definitely a challenging school and they have a fantastic pre-med program, but med school is its own like rigorous thing. So nothing can prepare you for med school, honestly and like nothing can prepare you for residency. You just get there, you adjust, and then learn what works for you and what doesn't. What is the study strategy of medical students? How did you study? What worked and what didn't work? This is a very heavy question because your study strategy changes from year to year in med school. So because of that, I'm gonna answer this question in a separate video. <laughs> What were your thoughts moving to a different state for med school? That's a good question. So at first I definitely wanted to stay in Texas for medical school. I primarily only applied to Texas med schools. And then later on in the season, I was like, why am I limiting myself to Texas? And so then I opened an AMCAS application and then applied to like five out of state schools. And Morehouse was one that I went to my interview, loved it, loved the people there. I loved the way that I felt when I was there. I knew I'd be really supported at this school and I was like, all right, I got accepted, like, let's go. <laughs> um, the thing is, like, you just, as you get older, you just learn that you just have to grow. And so I think this was God telling me that, like, this is your time to go live somewhere else in a place you're not familiar with, without your family around. And I think living on my own in a new city 
um, definitely helped me to grow in many different ways that I am so thankful for and that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise if I would have stayed in Texas. So if you're interested in applying to schools outside of your home state, I would strongly advise that you do because at one point, I just feel like you just gotta spread your wings and you just gotta like go try new things, try new experiences, live in different places because staying in your hometown for your whole life, that's just not the move, at least for me. All right, you guys, so this is the end of part one of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in part two. Don't forget to subscribe.